broadcast to the world, a record of the time, and an alternative to John Gormley, the RAA, the, F- the MPA, uh, Netflix, Spotify, and the like. And this week, I have a very special guest, Sean the fucking man Kennedy. Can you still hear me, Sean? I can, in fact, and thanks so much. Awesome. So, Sean, for those of you who are not aware, has been an internet personality and interesting person online for a very very long time i've been like trying to go down the list of things that you have done and things that you've produced over the years and just to like give a little sampling things like the cyberpunk is facebook page which is showcasing for the probably mostly for the younger kids now who didn't grow up in the 80s didn't get exposed to the ideals of what exactly is cyberpunk and it's just like portraying uh, little bits and pieces of the world that like show, yes, we are living in this weird cyberpunk time. Can I, uh, yeah. can I jump in there real quick? Just Go real it. quick. Not like, I did run Cyberpunk is there, but I left it. Oh, okay. So if anyone wants to go for it, yeah, because uh, I'll we'll get into that in the show. But I sort of walk away from Facebook and if they want to see exactly like, and I mean exactly the same theme, because I mirrored the feed on two sources. I, on Facebook, it was on Cyberpunk is, but like four years ago, before it was cool, I jumped on Mime, and Mimes.com, Cyberpunk with a three in it, right? So CYB, three R, punk, cyberpunk. And that's where you can get the current feed. So, because that Cyberpunk is feed hasn't been updated in um, like probably a year and a half. Okay. But Facebook, of course, you know, they cannibalize everything. Like, because, sorry to jump in. I just wanted to, no to say that. Yeah, so you've got your, your minds thing. It, as I, I'm just going to, like, re-highlight that. As far as alternatives to Facebook go, Minds is one of them. And you were one of the first people who not only did the social media thing, but realized right. in some sense how it can go wrong and so have... Uh, yeah, are in the process yeah, of jumping exit up. right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to uh, exit into strength for sure. It's uh, one of those kind of things that I've got a bit of a gift for that. I can identify trends, I suppose, and that sounds great in theory. But yes, now later it was running and screaming, so it's, it's a little terrifying to be right often and that sounds like i'm trying to be arrogant but i'm i'm really not so you, you, you sort of like facebook is the prince of darkness there's nothing good that can come of facebook and we were saying before we got on the air like i was actually going to just delete facebook and but everyone's got you know the the friend or the mom or the grandma or the aunt who uses facebook and doesn't use anything else and you can't get off and so they facebook essentially holds them hostage so they're kind of like a hostage if you want to still talk to grandma you have to go through us and it's hard for him. I'm hiding my wife sell books. So I have to have a social media presence. Otherwise, it's just not professional, right? And you play that game. But that's all crap, too. So you have to kind of be like, ah, you know, all hostages are considered dead. We're just going to cut this right now. <laughs> and let the tip fall where they may. Because if you don't have, it's like a relationship, you know? If you're in a relationship with someone and the power goes out and you don't have them anymore, that's not a real relationship. You know, like, I, I don't really, and that's a super unpopular opinion, along with sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. That, that poem, I think, is banned now. But it's like, it's super nuts how, like, social media, it's a bad idea. It's like social treason is a crime now. If you go against the norm, if you 
talk about the wrong thing, or if you even think maybe the wrong thing might possibly have a few good points, man, you're just it, it's on the tree of woe with you. You know, you're going to get nailed up there and conanning, biting buzzards and shit. That's going to be brutal. So it's super dangerous, right? Like, yeah. And now it's evolved to a point where we don't even, with Rant Radio, okay, the whole point, like I never, we, it's kind of the whole beauty of Rant Radio was that we sort of did it from the heart. It was like, hey, we're all a bunch of nerds before nerds are cool. And the vast majority of us were people who lived in fear of some level of like, and, and you build a community. And so you're like, hey man, we can all get through this. And I've always been like a big anti-suicide guy because I mean, anybody who's ever heard my stuff knows that I've gone through my stuff because otherwise I wouldn't know this stuff, right? Like obviously I've had my own issues too. And so it, it was sort of banded together. But now suddenly the internet has become, especially through Web 2.0, it's become like this control mechanism. And I keep thinking about what if instead of cell phones, what if you had a like a filter, okay? And instead of a cell phone, whatever you saw it, it wasn't a cell phone, it was a cockroach. So like a, and a then you'd have all these people thing. staring at the roach with like the lines going into their head from the roach and the roach was controlling everything because that would look a lot like an alien invasion like that's what an alien invasion would look like it would look like people walking around carrying around these insects that control them and that sounds kind of funny in a they live kind of way but the next time you're out and I would run around in the city take a look at like that because you're like holy shit bro like and I'm one of them right I'm sitting there and I, and I now I'm get off my lawn you know like I'm still like I use a phone as a phone but just recently I started you, know, you use it to look stuff up or whatever and you, you know, the, the you first know, hit is free right you, you get that one yeah the first hit is free and then before you know your watch is telling you when you're halfway home and you didn't ask right yeah. and well, they're telling you when bills are ready on your watch and you're like yeah hmm, it, it, it's, it's also really interesting nice. you use the, the term social treason because i read yeah. the uh, criminal code a couple months ago and uh, mm -hmm. i think it was treason that like if you actually read the definition of what treason is in Canadian law. It's like giving uh -huh. information to foreign governments or agents of foreign governments. So we have like this current cultural practice where it's like totally normalized to give the most personal and detailed information that we could possibly give to this entity that oh, yeah. was basically founded by the CIA. And so right. like we've got a, a whole culture of this, uh, which is kind yeah. of interesting on its own, but. Yeah, and so I, first I interrupted your intro and then I just didn't stop. So is there, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man, was there anything else that you wanted to get to? Is there like one out or is this it? Oh, no, no we, we can keep going. But I, I oh, guess okay, cool. the, uh, the first question <laughs> up though is, so you've got your books on the go. You've, you've written a couple and you've got uh, all these projects you've done over the years, but since you've done Newsreel, right. might Nothing. as well start, yeah. start, start there. And then what have you been up to since Newsreel, because people who are listening to this, after right. you finish listening to this show, go back and listen to some Newsreel shows, because they're still worth listening to even years later. But uh, since then, though. Where's John at? Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, I've always kind of had this uh, very surreal approach to the internet. Like, to me, the internet isn't a bunch of liars. It's like another dimension. It's like this place that we used to see the internet was back in the 80s, where it was like this weird dimension that existed in front of the spectrum. And if you could just use your laptop and your Wi-Fi connection to answer that spectrum, there was a world that was present that you could be part of. And you could pull music out of there. Music you never heard before. Music from the other side of the world. Music that changes your life. And that sort of brought about the whole idea of server and server provides. And the whole name server is a great play on words with server. I'm connecting with lost connection with server all those kind of things. So, and that brought about the server monks and tales from the Ashton Owl and these creative projects that I've been involved with. It wasn't for the genius of guys like James O'Brien and Samarian and his work to do the production. Because yeah, I'm a performer for sure and I'm a creative guy. But you can't really, I mean, when you're working with someone like James O'Brien, he's winning awards now and with movies and stuff. Like you think you're not going to them. Yeah. Right. So when you got Dr. Dre mixing your soundtrack, it, pretty easy to, to come across pretty awesome. And the funny thing is, too, is that's another side that, like, Tim and I couldn't be more opposite. Like, that guy was the left-wing guy, and I was the right-wing guy, and we would argue about stuff, and it was funny, and we were friends. And it was like this old married couple where you've got, like, Anne Rand and Archie from Archie Bunker's place, and they're married, and they're talking about stuff, and it's, like, super weird. Incidentally, that's where I got that term, social treason. I was fascinated a while ago, and this might, I, I hope this doesn't piss you off, because I know I, I didn't want to get into politics too much, oh, but go for it. I was fascinated why everybody hates Anne Rand. 
understand. Like, I often will judge people on who hates them. Mm. Like, if I see everybody where they're like, hey, you see this woman? Yeah, she lived like 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, she wrote like two books and some essays, and they're fiction, and she's a nobody, and she never went to school, but we fucking hate her. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay, uh... But she wrote two novels? Yeah. And these are not okay. small novels either. These are... No, no, they're not. They're really not. Like, I, I, I went through both of them on audiobooks, which if you're going to read them, audiobooks are the way to go, because the language, oh my God. <laughs> but, uh, well, because, I mean, Jesus Christ, that was strong, like 54 hours or some shit. Your average novel's like six hours. So, like, honestly, get a Snickers bar, because you're not going anywhere. You're yeah. going to be there a lot. It's good stuff. She's got some weird... I mean, I'm a writer, so, I mean, I've got judgments. I like my characters to be, like, rapey. But whatever, I enjoy the books. I thought they were good. But anyway, it was in Atlas Shrugged, they talked about social treason, where, I mean, if you haven't listened, like, Atlas Shrugged a commitment. Like, that's like getting a tattoo. If you just want a quick relationship, go listen to The Fountainhead, you'll get, like, the quick and dirty of, like, her whole worldview is kind of about. Yeah. But that was sort of it. And I think that all of us, the wogs, as I called them back in the day, I mean, we're all essentially in pursuit of truth. That's the idea. And, and, and she was really crazy. You know, for, for all her faults. She was actually yeah. really into that. And that was like a really core part of her worldview. Right, yeah, she definitely interest. believed it. Yeah. yeah, like, and you may not agree with her or whatever, but she wasn't trying to manipulate anybody. She was actually believed that shit. Like, she thought that shit was true. Maybe she was wrong, I don't know. But like, she believed it. Like, I don't mind if someone's a jackass and they really believe it, you know what I mean? What I hate is if someone's a jackass and it's a blatant manipulation. Right. Like, they, they're lying, they know they're lying, and they're lying to achieve an end. That's crap. Have I still got you? Yeah, still got me. So, oh, okay, what, yeah. one of the interesting things that came up this week, I wasn't going to go too much into this, but there was sure. a documentary that made the rounds on social media, then got censored right. heavily by social media, and then has been... Which one's that? The, uh, the Plandemic documentary. Saw it. Yeah, no one. Yeah. I have not seen it, so I I can't really comment on its content, but from we can. everything that, at least as far as it's been described to me, it is an extremely well-polished documentary. And if you disagree with its content, and maybe there's good reasons to disagree with its content, that's fine, right. but it's one of those things where we'll, if it is produced at a high enough level of quality, and if you disagree right. strongly enough with it, it's like that will never win the Academy Award for Best Documentary, even though it's oh, no. probably like yeah. the the one that probably should win if we're purely judging on like quality of documentary goes. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's not actually that good, but I, I suspect that it could be. And I, I kind of see Ayn Rand is the same way, where like people, if they really, really like uh, George Orwell, tend to really not like Ayn Rand and vice versa. And so... Well, that's the weird thing. Now, that's, that's just it. That's just it. Now, here's, here's the weird thing, if you don't mind me saying, okay? Yeah. When I listen to it, okay, that's a connection between you and the writer. So I would postulate that you are not going to read the same book I'm going to read even though we're both reading the same book. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to get different things out of it. And I'm always a bit hesitant when people tell me what to think before I've read something, no matter what it is. Right. They say, and they're trying to package this. So, like, I've sort of used that as a compass now. If there's something that everybody hates and all the mainstream media is like, oh, this is garbage, I'm, like, on that shit. I'm, like, checking that out because I want to know what it is they're saving. I mean, they're all shitting all over David Icke. David Icke has been mental forever, right? Like, David yeah. Icke, God love David Icke. I love David Icke. God, I wish David Icke was right. Man. So he, he was he's oh. on the Fediverse, and I tried to follow him, and he has so far uh, not let me follow him, which is kind of disappointing. Oh, I wish he was, you know, I'm sure he's not right on everything, but boy, I wish he was. Wouldn't it be great if the queen was a lizard person? We could, like, all quit our jobs and hunt lizard people full time. It'd be like my job. I'd have lizard people keep me necklaces and shit. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, that'd be so good. But unfortunately, I mean, maybe they are lizard people, but kind of hard to prove that, a little hard to get in there, which is getting back on that pandemic thing. So here's my approach, okay? After getting back to what happened to Sean. So at some point you wake up, you grow up, you wake up, you see the world is not as it should be, and you rally against the moon, you scream at the sky. And that screaming looks like rant radio. It looks like your show. It looks like fighting the fight. It's like, no, we will not go gently into that good night. There's something must be said. People need to understand that things are wrong, and it's okay to disagree with this, and it's okay to have an open mind, and I am with you, and we are together, and we will be solid, and we can get through this if we just understand that we are the same. Like, we get it. We agree on technique. 
Now, what's happened is that the Internet, Web 2.0 came in, and it's become a suppression and control tool. Mm. And I firmly believe that. So I'm gonna, I understand that you don't agree with me, okay? Like, I understand that I'm just talking here, and just by just saying this has nothing to do with you, this is just my own crazy person who sucks. Okay, but to me, I sort of came up with this idea that I don't need to know what the truth is. I just need to know somebody's lying. And I use that as like my compass. Like, you ever go back and watch the actual interview with Lee Harvey Oswald? There's like some camera footage of him talking on camera. And like nobody in the known universe who's had any sort of exposure to people whatsoever would ever think that that guy was so shifty, lone gunman. Like that guy's getting framed up and he knows it and his body language. And you know that, you see it, you know it. You know that buildings don't fall down by themselves. You know that stuff. Alex Jones was attacking George Bush and, and said that the guy orchestrated 9-11 and nothing happened to him. And then there was a regime change and suddenly Alex Jones gets crucified. And yeah, to Alex Jones, I give it like all these guys. I mean, they're great fun, they're entertainers, whatever. Some of the stuff they do, I mean, thank God for them because otherwise there'd be nobody saying crazy shit as the canary in the coal mine. Otherwise, it would be a much more bland world. Go ahead, sorry. It would be a much more bland world for sure. It yeah, and I love that stuff. If you haven't actually watched Alex Jones' documentaries, I mean, he's really great until he starts getting technical and talking about how, like, the internet and they'll use chips to control your mind. I'm like, ah, you were doing so good, Alex, until you got into that shit, you know? But I enjoy documentaries like that. That, like, by the end of the documentary, you're ready to just, like, put on a flak vest and go live in a bunker. And then you get outside and you're like, wait a minute, that's so, not true. So, speaking but, you know, of putting a flak vest on and going and living in a bunker. Sure. Now, we are currently in the midst of a global pandemic. And and are we? This, oh, are we? Yeah. And this, this, at least the freak out over it is worldwide. Sure, sure. Countries are locked what down all over the world. What does that mean? What does that mean? The, the lockdown the part? Or? No, I just, I don't like, have you seen any footage of mass graves? Because I really haven't seen any footage of mass graves. Uh, and I'm like, there's something going on. I mean, there's something going on for sure. But I think that it's weird how like little weird data and everybody's like fighting about this. I mean, there's something, it kind of feels off. I'm not saying that it's not real or whatever. That's, yeah. that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that there's something something like my spider sense is fucking tingling about this and I think everybody's spider sense is tingling about this like there's something fucked up here and I've seen it before and again and like like I said you know with like Kennedy and Oswald and all that stuff yeah yeah there's a virus yeah yeah it got out yeah yeah it's probably hyper contagious I'm just saying that there's an awful lot of shit going on here like two trillion dollars just went through and like there's a lot of power plays happening and I think we don't know what's really going on is where I'm going with it like I don't know what the truth is I don't I really don't I'm not sure what the fuck is happening I, mean, I know that there's people who are getting this and there's a virus and stuff. I know that's happening, I guess, because I mean, I get this, but I still go to work every day. I work in the city and I go downtown and I do this every day. And I'm not, for me, it's, you know, and even doing that is like a bad thing. Like you're a bad person for like, keep calm and carry on. Like you're not able to do that and to even talk about it. It's so hyper now. Yeah. But I mean, I, since this thing for, okay. So you want to know what happened to me? I made a joke on Facebook when Trump first started to run. Because because he announced it, I thought the whole notion of Trump running was so ridiculous that I was like, oh, wow, this will be great. We'll have, like, Putin and Trump in a cage match for the WWF. This will be awesome. And I had the entire fucking universe land on me. And that's not even like, out of sync. Like, anybody could download the stuff in my past, and that's yeah, completely on par yeah, this, with stuff that I would think. Exactly. Because I really don't care who's in power, because I think the whole thing's pretty much run by lizard people. But I'm you know, just saying that, like, honestly, like, who cares? It's a joke. It's funny. And now that became hardcore harshly illegal and that affected my professional life i wound up losing a job and and all because of the political climate and how hard it shifted Holy shit. and it was like yeah and and it sort of came down so i sort of had to come to some realizations about what's important so stepping back from politics when i say let's not talk about politics and into <laughs> pandemics and stuff did you have a question about the covid lockdown thing like well, i was just through? kind of curious on, on your experience of it and like, I'm either gonna die or I'm not. I'm gonna, oh. but I'm not gonna die fucking scared or tired. Yeah. So I'm just gonna keep doing my shit. And people are like, well, you're selfish. And I'm like, yeah, nothing new there, man. Because I'm out for me and mine. And that's how it is. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, you're one of me and mine. You're part of my people. The logs are my people. And I just kind of think that that whole, like, I don't know, like, what would Rudyard Kipling do? You know, what would Winston Churchill do? What would, what would men who are greater than I am do in a situation like this? And I ask myself that question, and for me, for me, I come to the conclusion that, well, men greater than I would probably be brave, and they would probably carry on. And yeah, there's a lot of fucking terror and fear and, and shit like that. But like, I don't know. I, 
I'm a little sketchy of all this media, which we've seen them historically use weird shit to control people en masse. Anybody remember Hong Kong? I remember Hong Kong. That was a big deal. That was like a huge deal. You're, you're talking Actually, about the, the, like, the protest like a little uh, while before yeah. like the beginning of the year. Yeah, started. and I'm not saying that like this whole COVID thing is up to suppress Hong Kong, but Hong Kong sure the fuck went away. I mean, they had riot police running through the subways, grabbing people and throwing them on the ground. Shit was getting real in Hong Kong. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, well, that's pretty convenient. I'm not saying that that's why. I'm just saying that that is something that happened. Right. So getting back to that thing about the pandemic thing, okay? Now, everything is like this weird, I don't know if I'm using this term correctly, so so maybe help me out here, but everything seems to be like a straw man attack where it's like, you see this? This guy's a bad person, so what he said is wrong. And I think that that's horseshit. I don't care if a crow lands on my car and gives me the formula for fucking space-time travel. If that formula is true and works, who gives a shit where it comes from? So like, if you've got someone who's telling you something that is verifiable true and you check it and it's verifiably true who cares where it came from right. which has been my approach with like everything from Alex Jones to David Icke I love their research don't agree with their conclusions much like religion like the research don't agree with the conclusion the ancient text of the Bible yeah raining fire from the sky all the firstborn dying in Egypt okay respect your research don't agree with your conclusions maybe that was something else you know like and this isn't even speak against that to even say that like well I don't fucking know I mean are all is anything that these anti back people are saying true because you've got white supremacists who will sit there and say like the holocaust didn't happen well obviously it fucking did because we've got like a hundred thousand piles of body shit right? right so that pretty much just proves well I don't understand what the confusion is here let's just move on you know and then they're like well you can't talk about it or whatever but I mean honestly if you just lay it out there there's signs there you can see it there it is moving forward so we don't have anything we need to be afraid of we just like well what's going on with this virus thing well this is happening and that's happening these scientists say this these scientists say that and I'm like well wait a minute somebody's right this whole thing isn't fucking objective there's matter what is the truth well that's complicated is it is it really because I can buy shit in Japan on the internet through my phone flying 50,000 feet to fucking air and you can't tell me what is going on in any sort of certain way in this situation and that to me seems odd you know it seems unlikely that the thing that has shut down the planet is not well understood like or, or and, and, and there, 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 say, these like missing hey, gaps in our knowledge right like, what yeah, you and I'm like, what? Like, it doesn't hurt. And so, you know, you got these pandemic people, they come out and they say shit. Now, maybe, maybe they don't believe what they're saying. Maybe they're actually pricks and they've got an agenda and they want to kill kids or whatever the hell is going on. But, yeah, watch it. Why wouldn't you watch that? I mean, if nothing else, like, I got really familiar with the Third Reich. Why did I get familiar with the Third Reich? So you can recognize it when you see it again. That's why you know that stuff, right? If you're going to train in war, you have to understand tactics and stuff because you want to avoid that. Nobody nobody wants war less than a soldier because a soldier understands what war is. And I don't, I've never understood why people, like they create this climate and this identity where, like, well, you're a soldier, so you're pro-violence or some shit. And I've never got that. And you can speak out about it, but now it's dangerous. Now you can go to jail. In Canada, you can literally go to jail if you say the wrong thing. Right. It's crazy. So... If you look at this pandemic thing, and we can't talk about it, because if we do, we're social treasonous, hate criminal, anti-vaxxing psychopaths or something. And that to me is really, really strange. So I think that, yeah, man, I mean, you should watch what the people you don't agree with say and do so you have some sort of idea what they're talking about. And if they have facts, then look at their facts, because facts are facts are facts. Like, and even that gets really political. People are like, well, facts aren't facts, that's your truth, which I've never understood that, because I'm like kind of a math guy, so... Yeah, like, I, there's but, definitely in, in that crowd a, a lack of familiarization with mathematics. And like, it, you can tell that when people start going down that road, it's like, well, have you ever tried to do math and come to conclusions that way? It's, yeah, it's, it, you know, that thing is insane. It's like nuts. Like, how can you not? And you get to that point where it's like you're arguing with someone who's like a harsh religious zealot and the light sort of comes on in your eyes where you're like, oh my God, this person's crazy. And you're just like, how do I end this conversation and not go to jail? Like, is this person going to report me for social treason or because I thought maybe I should know what's in a needle I'm being given? I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's a really, because that seems what a lot of these anti-vaxxers are like. They're sort of like, yeah, I want to know what's in the needle. And I'm like, fucking fair enough. I mean, if you're going to shoot me, I'm full of shit. I want to know what's in it. I mean, that's, yeah. that's fun. 
Like, how is that anti-vax? Well, it's like, if some guy walks up to you on the street with a needle and says, I'm going to shoot you full of this shit, and you say, no, you're anti-vaccine, fuck that. I don't know. Like, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to... And I'm a big-time pro-choice person. Like, I'm big-time. Like, well, women's right to choose, whatever. Because, whatever. I think gay people should be able to keep machine guns with silencers to protect their pot plants. That's fine. So, but, you know, the weird... Anything where there's, like, a manipulation to get you to do something... Right. Seems kind of weird to me. And, and once like, you've been exposed to, like, enough people who try to manipulate you, you start, like you, you said, start noticing the patterns. Again. And when you yeah. start picking up on the pattern, even if it's well intended, and sometimes things are well intended, and they still, like, you know, what's a good example of that. You know, what's a good example of Netflix. Netflix. You know, it's weird. Like, a new show will come out, and it'll be like, Have you watched Sean's show on Netflix? And then it'll be like, You'll log on Netflix, it'll be like, It's a big poster of Sean's show. And then it's like, Oh, and then you'll go on Facebook media, and everyone's like, Well, most people, you know, we recommend Sean's show. And now I'm so sensitive to that shit. I'm like, a fucking Sean guy. I'm not like, I'm not, it could be the greatest show ever. People yeah. are like, spontaneously feeling. And when they watch the show, and I'd be like, no, I'm not watching your show. Fuck you, because you're forcing it on me. And that's honestly how I feel about that. Like, so like, so <laughs> um, along uh, the lines of shows that Netflix is encouraging people to watch, I can't help but wonder, what is your take on Black Mirror? And have you seen the Black Mirror? <laughs> you know, it's is so this funny. a Sean Kennedy I mean, project that you can put your name on? Yeah, the whole universe sort of has messaged me and be like, by the way, I know you're writing Black Mirror, or they ripped you off, and at least those people owe you some loyalties. Yeah, I watched like two episodes, and I really got upset. And I find it really sad. Like, I can't... Uh... So, like, getting back to what happened to Sean, okay? So, when I was going through a really dark patch, um, I wound up starting to write. And that's where the Exoskeleton Codex came from. And that's where I've got three books out in that series now, an ebook, and it's an eight book series, which I've got five books written on it, three books are out, and I've got another three books to go. Now, it's good to have a goal. It's good to have, like, a role model or something they want to look at. And for me, I've always thought, like, if I was going to be a writer and wanted to write a book, like, when I did a screenplay, the movie I wanted to be, like, a movie that you're like, if I could make a movie as good as this, I will feel as though I have succeeded, mm. right? And for me, that movie was, like, Alien, which is arguably probably one of the best science fiction and horror films ever made. Right. So, for me, when I look at books, I think of a book like Aim High, right? So, my book that I would write, that would be the book I would want to be compared to is June, the first one. Okay. And so that's a tall order. I mean, you gotta, you want to do something that deeply affects people and moves people. And to do that, you can't be a hack writer. So you can't, there's a whole movement on, not to segue into writing here, but there's a whole movement where you're essentially, they're encouraging people to be hack writing. Hey, is billionaire porn hot right now? Write a book on billionaire porn, right. which is sick and disgusting. Like, I, I kind of look at, at writing as, like, yoga. Okay, like, I don't write because I want to make money. I write because I have to or I'm going to die. Okay. So that's sort of my approach. So the first three books I put out, I'm going to complete the rest of the series because I feel really like a prospect selling the book in segments for, like, $5 a segment. And I'd like to work it out so that everybody who's bought, like, the e-books or whatever they get. I, I hate charging money. I just, I've always hated it. I'm, I'm the worst businessman ever that way. But, like, I I would give them a book because they've already paid five bucks for it. Usually, all my fan base is like, dude, I will fucking buy it by the chapter if you want, man. Just keep going. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, so you have to be very respectful with that, but I'd like to put it out as a solid, singular, Y2K compliant physical book that they can have and hold and it can help people as a strategy. For those who aren't familiar, the, the whole book covers the story of a, of a young boy named Jacob who has his mind wiped and he's ejected from an archaeology into a uh, pretty hard cyberpunk dystopian World. And that's what the Exoskeleton Codex is about. And there's a lot of like personal journey and stuff. So that's been the major focus. But when that became when uh, most of what I was doing, like that, when you're writing like that on a very deep level, it, it utterly consumes your life. And if you're good, I mean, if you want to be good, that it has to. Right. Like it, otherwise, you're just you, what like, are you doing? Right? You have to get into that inspired state. And when you're in that, yeah, inspired no, I'm, I'm going to speak from the heart, you're... and I'm like super judgy on people who like put effort into smoking at coffee shop and go to like writers meetings and all that shit. Fuck all that, man. Like if you want to write, you write. If you're an artist, you want to paint, you sit at home and fucking paint. Okay, like that's what you do. And people who like are worried about their motivation and stuff, like I respect that. Okay, that's cool and everything, but there's work, and it is work, and it's hard work, and it's 
suck. I mean, maybe you wind up deleting the 2,000 words or whatever. Maybe, maybe you didn't come out right or whatever. But you have to sit there and you've got to go through that bullshit before you can get to the gold, right? And great book on writing, by the way. Anyone who wants to read it, Stephen King's book on writing. It's probably the best book I've written on the craft, yeah. And I've kept that book for years. But. Also, so I, after all the social media started going crazy, I began to sort of suck back. And then I watched as everyone decided that Rudyard Kipling was like a hard reason. And I'm like, Rudyard Kipling, like Rudyard Kipling is a, is a hard racist. Okay. Like I will never be as good of a writer as Rudyard Kipling. Like that, like it's, it's not possible. You've set your goal of where you want to be and Kipling is above that goal. So. Yeah. And, and I'm like, and all of society is shitting on someone who's 20 times better than I am. And I'm like, wow, that doesn't bode well for the DVD, does it? Like, that's not super positive. So I've had to think about a great many things. And that's why I think, like, I'm a big fan. I'm going to get myself in big trouble here. But I'm, like, a big, big fan of Jordan Peterson. So a lot of people don't care for him. Mm-hmm. I do. So I, I don't know where you're at with that. I hope I've pissed you off. Well, no, no. I mean, like, I haven't gotten deep enough into his, his thoughts. So, again, like, I saw the debate between, I think it was him and Sam Harris, and okay. like, they, like, wrestled around with truth for a while, but I was expecting him to be a lot more into ideology and ideology that couldn't oh. be backed up and that sort of thing, and he was you, you want some gold? If you want to check out Pearson stuff, like, hit all the bullshit, okay? Mm-hmm. Go straight, and this is going to be, like, a weird thing for me to recommend, but go straight to his Bible lectures. You just start, I know it sounds crazy. It's not about the Bible. It's, it's about the premise of these stories and morality and stuff like that. Right. Like just, just, if you wanted to see if this guy's full of shit or not, just go listen to that, because he's not trying to, he's trying to translate ideas, and I think they're brilliant. And, I mean, we lose a draw. This is some old dude on his page talking about Bible stories that got, like, over a million views, like, in no time at all. So he's a really interesting guy. I think that his big strength is that he actually doesn't really say anything revolutionary. He says shit that we all said on Rant Radio back in the day. He says shit that, like, generally everyone agrees with, but if you agree with it and you can't defend it, somehow you're a bigot or something. Uh, it's super crazy. So we're all afraid. Everybody's, like, super scared to say anything that anyone will disagree with because you might go to jail. And that seems to be kind of dystopian. Even if, like, okay, like, you go online and... People are like, oh, I wouldn't go online because there's a lot of white supremacists there. And I'm like, well, yeah, but that's how you know it's free. Right, Because there has to be idiots and morons on there. Otherwise, you don't know. When they start coming for David Icke, you have to be like, okay. Because, I mean, the guy's saying that the queen's a lizard person, okay? And they're taking him down. Does that mean that there's a chance people might believe the queen's a lizard? Like, are you fucking serious? Anybody who listens to the guy, it's entertainment. And this goes back to when it was, like, black rap back in the 90s. And everybody was like, oh, they're talking about shooting people and stuff and and this was like the tipper sticker and all that stuff and now that's like shit that's been turned up to death now now it's, it's like 11 now you can't say shit so, but so here's, one, here's the one thing of the, one of the interesting things that, that i have picked up from peterson though is that like sure. like you said he goes back and he reads the old stuff and he's, sure. he pays attention to a lot of things that i think have been forgotten and that sure. we're not used to reading in the same way and we're not picking up the same things that, like, we can still go back and read the Bible. And, like, I'm reading the Quran right now. And I've read it now twice. This is the third time I'm going through it. And, like, there's, you can read the, these old, uh, especially religious works, and take the literal meaning, and that's easy. Anyone can right. do that. But there, over the, the course of history, have been people who have dedicated themselves to reading. Maybe it's reading tea leaves or whatever, but they're pulling these other layers of meaning out of these old works. And okay, now this is the perfect like, segue. Yeah. So, everything takes a shit. Everybody started on the same page here. I'm sure a lot of people agree with me. So, we're a little bit older now. We see the internet. It raises up. Suddenly, it transforms into some weird, bizarre mind control object. Everybody's sitting back going, what the fuck happened? And we're wondering what to do now. Now, I have the answer. So, working with the premise of, I don't need to know the truth. I just need to know someone is lying. Okay, that's super vital. Okay. Now, we, I'm sort of... Uh, I'm going to depart. We're going to go off into coast-to-coast land here, okay? But there's either, like, consciousness and intelligence, like, meaning I'm Sean, who is a conscious biological being, who's speaking to you, who is also a conscious biological being, okay? Like, so we, we can agree that that is happening. Is there, does other biological beings have consciousness, i.e., does my dog have consciousness, or is he just a collection of neurons that have to be firing that way? The first question is, is there an intelligence that is different from human intelligence? Okay. I would say yes. Like, if you see dolphins and stuff, 
that like an intelligence. Right. Squids. Okay. So pretty. Dolphins. Yeah. Pretty good. So where I'm going here is like, is there some sort of a force? I want to say that's like there's like a circumstances and like a vibe, maybe a force or something that is kind of like promoting. And then there's circumstances and forces that are like kind of destructive. And, and sometimes people call things like good and bad and shit like that. And I'm one of those people who kind of labels that stuff good and bad. And people are like, well, sometimes destruction is necessary for blah, 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 blah. But I sort of approach things from a very practical standpoint. So bringing this more sharply into focus, has everybody who's ever seen a ghost been wrong? That's my question. So everyone who's ever seen something supernatural, are they wrong? Some people would say yeah. I would say no. Okay. I, I would say that no, that somebody somebody saw something. I mean, Jesus Christ, we got like accounts and accounts and accounts and accounts of, of people that have seen stuff. So that makes me go, huh, okay, well, there's a lot of that. And then when you start running around that sort of a world, there's a lot of crazy woo-woo people talking about rocks and crystals and stuff and energy and all this kind of shit. And, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool, bro, but, you know, if you're going to talk to me about magic, if you can't throw a fireball, it's not really magic. Because you know? I want something that's like tangible that I could do right now. Like, if you like, I can do magic. I'm like, show me. And you throw a fireball. I'm like, okay. I'm interested in what you got to tell me. Or, you know, you, you but, throw the, the, the rod down and it turns into snakes, that sort of thing, too, right? Yeah, you know, like, open a dimensional door, Dr. Strange, and we'll talk. Otherwise, fuck off. Don't come to me with, like, well, I'm a mage, are you? And then you start laying some what the bleep do we know shit on me. And I'll be like, no, bro. Like, no. I'm, I'm here for the guy with both hands. Like, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. So, and it sounds kind of tongue in cheek, but when you look at it over time, you sort of think, like, well, if there was something dark and sinister in like a Call of Cthulhu sort of vibe, right? That would mean that people would be aware of that and people who would use that to their advantage. So if there was people who could use dark magic to get ahead, they would. Right. Right. So what would that look like? Would that look like really... Because they, they, they would have an advantage, right? They'd be wealthy, right? Because they have an advantage. Yeah. And that's usually what people want if they want cash, right? I have three wishes. The first one's usually be rich. So it would probably look like really wealthy people dressing up in robes and chanting and shit, probably. is probably what that would look like. So and probably, probably like the... Like uh, uh, what was the uh, the grove that uh, Bohemian the, grove. yeah the Bohemian grove that that yeah, sort of thing. crazy right? video you know like a lot of people it's really funny they show you that eyes wide shut and then they got that video from the rooftop of like Yale where they got people dressed in costumes doing mock sacrifice green and shit and people are like oh those are just kids having fun and I'm like um is it. <laughs> Is it though? Because like, you know, I've been pretty drunk and done some crazy shit and I've never been so drunk somewhere. I was like, hey man, let's put on black robes and start chanting to this giant owl god effigy. Like that shit's never happened, you know? Like, and generally rich people are pretty stuck up. I mean, that's sort of the vibe. So, so, so speaking of, of, of worshipping things, I'm just going to throw a little right. tangent on this. Are you aware that in Saskatchewan, we have a shrine in our legislature. This is the house of government, the professional, right. everyone's respectable here. And yet we have a shrine in our house of government to our football team. And it is a, like not a small thing <laughs> where the people who run our province can go and pray to their football god. And then that's just how things roll here, which is totally normal, right? Like uh, people yeah, pray that's, that's... to a uh, football god and then that that football god, we throw m hundreds of millions of dollars at it. They're talking right, about, now, I think, 150 more million right now. And yeah. Okay, so here's the thing, here's the thing. This actually ties to what I'm talking about. So what I'm saying here is, is I sort of approach the paranormal and that whole thing like an occultist, what I call an occultist, which is that I don't really need to understand how a radio works to turn the radio on and to hear sound coming out of it. Right. Like, I don't need to understand electrical dynamic theory or any of that shit. And I'm just thinking that it seems to me that there's some shit going on here as you start running down the rabbit holes. You start looking into, like, the missing 4-on-1 stuff and how that relies uh, ties in with, like, people going missing in cities. And you wind up looking at, like, you know, I know what I saw. And you start getting into all these sort of, like, weird, uh, on the surface, they all seem to be these weird, you know, fringy cattle mutilations and all this kind of stuff. And it seems like it's all this hugely scattered, crazy pants nuttiness, right? That doesn't make any sense. But it's been my experience that this is all kind of sort of connected. Like, there's something weird going on, and there's a great deal of distraction that happens in our day-to-day -day lives that stops us from looking at that. And I'm not going to fold this into, like, suddenly I found Jesus or something. I'm just saying that there's, like, you look at guys like Graham Hancock. I don't know if you're familiar with Graham Hancock and his nope. world, or um, he's the guy who's like, hey, the pyramid 
term it's older than people say they are. Okay. And then he like went around the world and was like diving on fucking cities and shit. So when you start to look at the information you've been given about everything, which is fine. I mean, it's good to analyze what people have told you. And you don't really know if what they're saying or not is true, but you need to figure out that they don't know either and they're fucking lying. Like, that's weird to me. And so getting back to this pandemic thing, what would be their motivation to lie about all of this data that you can go online and verify for yourself whether or not it's true? If you were going to make a documentary and you got all these facts, which is not funny, you know, if ever you watch the mainstream news, they will tell you the digested version of the news. It's like people talking about the Quran. They don't, they don't actually, they tell you what the Quran means. They don't tell you what actually the fucking Quran says, right? Mm-hmm. Like they, they kind of digest it for it and feed it to you and then they're that is best. So I'm just saying that maybe we should look at what the data is, not just for this pandemic, but like, have there been paranormal experiments done by legitimate sources? Is that a thing? And people out of it, no, yeah, that's all bullshit. Really? Is it? Uh, Have you looked into it? Have you really, like, really looked at it? Because there seems to be an awful lot of more people who are stupid. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. But not everybody is stupid. And if people have been seeing a fish, in a lake for like 3,000 years and everybody says, no, that fish doesn't exist. And people who don't know the fish doesn't exist, keep saying the fish, there might be a fucking fish in the lake. I don't think that's a crazy thing to to say, like to ask. And I think there's a massive resistance to that because in Scattering Dagon, which was my second book I wrote, I talk about a thing called the mind fan. And this is the same idea as what's on the Matrix. You know, you take the red pill, blue pill, we never awaken a mind past a certain point. But I mean, there's people who are going to listen to this broadcast who's going to know what I'm talking about here. When, so, and usually that's when the conversation gets really fucking weird. People start talking about mushrooms and ayahuasca and like weird, bizarre, spiritual crystal meditation experiences and shit like that, right? Yeah. But there is something there and I don't know what that is right some people say it's like demons and angels and gods and stuff and I don't fucking know you know they, they've got their words for it they've got their concepts to describe sure. it but like, sure. they, like they, they still have the thing to describe that they're trying yeah, to, right. to reach at right and they're like well that dude healed himself yeah that's a placebo what's a placebo we don't fucking know okay well right. so I sort of look at that and I wonder maybe there's another field of like okay like 50 years ago well 100 years ago computer science was like, there's no computer science. Like, you expect computer science to like, in 1920, you'd be like, what the actual, right? Yeah. But now, we say computer science, and it's a, it's a field. It's like biology or chemistry or something. You know right. what I mean? It's an entire field of science that just was created. And I would wonder if maybe there might be other fields of science we don't know about yet. But, like, there has to be. Like, the, the, the idea well, that we've, think. like, got all of the sciences that we're ever going to develop already right. is, like, looking even 20, 30 years back, it's as clear as possible that we have not gotten the, the way to think about things in that level yet. So what I'm saying is, it's like when Thrud was sitting in the caves, watching the lightning come down from the sky, talking to God next to him, he's like, dog, you know, man, I bet you, you can, you can get that lightning and you can like contain that shit somehow, you know, and we could like use it to kill mammoths or something. That would be dope. <laughs> because that like, that lightning, that fucks shit up when it hits it. I'm really sure we could use it for that. And God would be like, no man, that's crazy pants. That's like the finger of God. The terrorist didn't even talk about that. And he's like, okay, well, whatever. But that's what I'm talking about. Is and, and at that moment, we look at that and, you know, like fish. If fish are swimming around and all of a sudden an eagle, I don't know if you've ever been underwater, but if you ever get underwater and you look up, it looks like the surface is like this silver sky. Right. And if there's fish swimming around and all of a sudden this eagle comes by and grabs one of the fish and he pulled him through the silver sky and he's out of here. And then all the other fish are like, that. that's the stupidest shit. I've, I've ever heard in my life. Like, there's astronauts who jump out of the silver sky, but like, we don't, you know, there's nothing out there. Man, you're making it up. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of how I think the world is. I think that there's a lot more going on here. Like, I've always thought it's a bit strange that we're the most complicated things we can find in the known universe. Right. Like, that, does that seem odd to you? Like, we are the most complicated thing we can find. Like, that doesn't seem to really jive. Like, how come we're in this vast, giant, like, we got some badass optics going on with our telescopes and shit, man. We can see stuff, okay? Yeah. And we haven't found fuck all that touches the human neocortex. We've got, like, simple carbohydrates, 
ammonia and things like that, but nothing even close. Right. And on one hand, you've got like material science saying, yeah, all this is a huge coincidence. You die, you're dead, that's it, game over, everything's worked through, nothing matters. And on the surface of that, you're like, okay, yeah, I can see that. Sure. I mean, it makes life a lot easier. What you do doesn't matter, right? Because like, who gives a shit? You know, I'm going to sit at home and eat Cheetos all day. Who gives a fuck because, you know, the universe is cruel. So uh, but, on that topic, we are kind of getting sure. near the end of the show. So. Oh, I'm sorry, I just rambling. Oh, no, no, it's all good, it's all good. But now that we're near the end, is there anything you'd like to get out? I mean, you've, you've had the microphone for years, so I'd imagine there's probably not too much you haven't said, but is there anything that you'd like to say now that you've got this chance among many others? Just to say to, to the people, to the logs and stuff? To, um, to the logs, yeah. Go for it. Okay, well, I'll sum up, because I was talking about a plan to fix everything. So money is the ammunition of the future. I would take that whole serenity prayer thing where they talk about having the courage to know the things you can change and the blunt you can't, and I would completely abandon any sort of thought of, like, fighting the power or standing up or doing any of that stuff. I would 100% focus on making money so that you, as a good person, will be able to look after the three or four or five people in your life that matter. And that sounds crazy. I mean, it's like, well, God, isn't that kind of, listen, man, like, cut the shit, okay? Things are going to get really hairy. Well, and, and things are already starting to get hairy, right? Yes, like yes. So I would look at things like, I'd probably look at ways you could make money online, like, uh, financial markets might be a thing, maybe a business, like, but start looking outside of the box, start really thinking about not what you want, but what's effective, so that, well, I don't want to be the kind of guy that does this, do you want to be the kind of guy that looks after your parents? Do you want to be the kind of guy that looks after the person you love, so that when their life takes shit, you'll be able to, like, step up? Then that shit's going to need money. And anybody who tells you that that's not the case is lying to you. Right. So... That would, sounds like just a bullshit thing to say, but it is really the truth. Like, don't get sucked into fighting for causes. Don't get sucked into protests. Don't get sucked into any that. There are people that you care about, and you need to be objective, and you should never be afraid to ask the question, even for yourself, even if you research your shit on your own, and you've got, like, the IP hiding software so you can look at the books no one wants you to read. Yeah, you absolutely have to do that, because there's something going on. You know it. I know it. We can't prove it, but there's something something going on and we don't know what it is and no matter what is on the other side of that door you will be better served to fight it if you have cash and that's a fact awesome so awesome clo closing yeah. thoughts there so yeah uh, awesome. and with that i think i'm going to end the show thank you all of you out there who are listening and again i will uh, link to the mines and other uh, links for sean uh, anywhere where this video is posted and just for those of you who are aware or so that you can be aware i do have a subscriber star i can't myself can use the money obviously if you yeah, uh, definitely subscribe because guys like this are rare. Yeah. Guys like this are rare. And if you don't support independent media like this, it, it all dies. And that's exactly the point. So with that, I'm going to cut out with a special version of the Goodbye song. And I will see you all next week.